Hi, my name's Ankit. And my name's Ellie, and welcome back to Internet. We really hope you enjoyed our last video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to take a history. This is a really important skill, but it's really scary to do for the first time. So in this video, we're going to cover our systematic approach of how to take a good history. We hope you enjoy, and if you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and keep tuned for future videos. Today, we're going to start with one of the most important skills to be a doctor, how to take a history. Many clinicians argue that you can get up to 70% of the diagnosis just by taking the history without taking any blood tests or any other forms of imaging. The problem though, is that when you just start on the wards, taking a history can be really daunting. And I commonly found myself in two situations. So either I didn't know what to ask, and this would mean that my histories were really short and I missed out half of the information. On the other hand, sometimes I found myself asking for way too much information. And this meant sometimes I ended up speaking to patients for over an hour. So when I was being taught how to take a history, there was a lot of emphasis on what's called the Calgary Cambridge model. Now supposedly this is one of the best models for how to do a consultation. And when taking a clinical history, the model argues that we should focus on three key areas. The biomedical perspective, the background information, and the patient's perspective of their illness. However, that's all we got told. We didn't get told how to ask these questions, how they link to each other, what to do if we're trying to ask about one thing but the patient is talking about a different aspect. Now I'm not saying at all that this is a bad model because it has been really successful. But the problem is when you're new on the wards, how do you implement it to take a good structured history? So to overcome this, we've come up with our own template of how you can guarantee taking a logical structured history every time. And our model is PISP, FDS. This stands for Presenting Complaint, ICE, Systems Review, Past Medical History, then you go on to the Family History, the Drug History, and finally the Social History. By following this template, it gave me a set structure on how to organise my consultations every time and ensure I got all the information I needed in a coherent order. And the best thing about it, I found, is that it still gives you the flexibility to move different blocks around and ensure that you can keep a good flow throughout the consultation. So, let's look at the specifics of this template, learning what to ask in each of the different sections. To start with, you always need a good introduction. And in the introduction, we're looking to do three key things. Introduce ourselves, establish a rapport, and most importantly, set the scene for the consultation going forward. So, I always use the same opening because I think it addresses all these key points and brings a very nice flow into the consultation. So let's say I'm taking a history from Mr. Jones. I'd say something along the lines of, Good afternoon, my name's Ankit and I'm one of the student doctors working here. Is it Mr. Jones? I just wanted to ask you some questions about how you're feeling today and then I'll take that information, relay it to my senior and then we can go from there. Before I start, are you comfortable or would you like me to get you anything? Do you mind if I take a seat? Now that you've completed the introduction, you're ready to start taking your history. And the best way to do that is to ask a nice open question. For example, what's brought you in to see the doctor today? This now allows the patient to answer in their own words exactly what their issue is. Now, the purpose of the open question is to allow you to get into the presenting complaint. And this will be the main reason why this patient has come into the hospital. So to explore the presenting complaint, what we advise you do is that you wait to hear what their response is and then you summarize this back to them. However, before then asking about the specifics, it's important that you screen for more symptoms that this patient might be experiencing. And this is because patients rarely ever present with just one symptom. So for example, you could say, you've told me about this, this and this. Before I discuss a little bit more, I just want to check are there any other symptoms that you're feeling? And once you finish screening, then you can go through each of the symptoms in turn. And when you do this, it's useful to have another structure. And the structure that we've decided to use is OATES. O-A-T-E-S. For each symptom, this tells you about the onset, any associated symptoms, the timing, any exacerbating factors, and finally, some specific questions that you're going to want to ask. Notice how this is really similar to the common acronym Socrates, which is used for pain. 
just missing out some of the specifics. By doing this, you'll really understand in detail exactly what symptoms the patient is feeling. And as you learn more, you'll learn which specific questions to ask. But following this structure for now should help. Having explored the presenting complaint, we suggest the next thing to do is ice the patient. Now this means checking their ideas, concerns and expectations. And in fact, this is really important as it allows you to explore any specific concerns the patient has or anything else that might be on their mind. So the three questions we suggest is, do you have any idea what this could be? Are you particularly concerned about anything? And finally, what were you hoping to get out of the visit today? And what you'll find is that this gives you a really good opportunity to really smoothly link into the next part of the history. So if the patient wants to go home, you could say something like, okay, in order to do that, I just want to ask you a few specific questions. So now onto the systems review. I think the systems review is actually the most important part of the history. And you'll find that this part really differentiates the medical students who know what they're talking about to those who are just reading a script. The first part is the specific review. And what this does is it allows you as the student or the doctor to fill in any bits of the science that are missing and try and put a complete picture together. This specific section will be different for each history and that's why it's the hardest bit to learn. For example, if a patient presents with headaches, you need to think of all the different systems that might be causing a headache and ask some questions about those. For example, you might want to ask about any visual changes, any signs of an infection, any signs of a head injury. Notice how these are all specific things connected to the main presenting complaint. Once you've done this, the next part is the general systems review. Think of this as a quick safety net of just checking the main red flags to ensure that you're not missing anything really serious. To do this, we've come up with the following mnemonic. Fat gorillas will always be willing to try nice roast potatoes. And that stands for fevers, glands, weight loss, changes in appetite, bowel movements, waterworks, feeling more tired than usual, any episodes of travel, night sweats, any rashes, and if they're a female, are they pregnant? And you'll find that that should cover you for some of the most serious things going on. Once we're done with the systems review, you'll notice that the history really does speed up and we can get through the next sections really quickly. So now you wanna focus on the background of the patient and that will include their past medical history. And in a nutshell, we wanna find out about four key things. Their previous experience of this problem whether they have any other medical conditions, whether they've ever been admitted to hospital, and if they've ever had any surgeries. What naturally follows on from their past medical history is their family history. Many students and patients get confused by what family actually means. So as a rule of thumb, we think it's worth specifying to the patient that we're basically talking about first degree relatives, parents, any siblings, and any children. And all you need to ask is, do any conditions run in the family? So we're coming to the end now, but what you have to ask about is the drug history. And again, it's just a matter of asking three simple questions. Do you take any prescribed medicine, any medicines over the counter, and finally, do they have any allergies? And sometimes asking about medication can even reveal another comorbidity, such as asthma or diabetes. The final part of the template is asking about the social history. And you'll find this is really important. After all, patients aren't robots. They have lives, they have jobs, they have personalities. Now the first part of the social history is asking about their life. And we'll want to find out where they live, who they live with, and what they do for work. On the other hand, the second part of the social history is more about their lifestyle factors. Here we're gonna be concerned about alcohol, smoking, and any illicit drug use. Just like the rest of the history, it's important to really try and be specific and narrow down. It's not good enough to just ask if someone smokes. We want to know when they started, how many cigarettes they smoke a day, and if they have quit, how long they were smoking for. So well done. You've now collected all the information that you need. To finish a history, I'd usually summarize the main findings back to them, and then just ask if I've missed anything. And that's really all there is to it. Once you've learned this, you'll find that it's only the presenting complaint and the specific systems review that you need to change for each history. Go online and check out our portal where we've made example templates for a variety of different symptoms. In addition, we also have FAQs and very detailed explanations of why we're asking these different questions, just in case you've forgotten. But hopefully next time you're on the wards, 
you'll have a structured template to use to make sure you get the best clinical history every time. So we really hope you enjoyed that and we'd encourage you to click on the link below and get access to all our template histories for free. And remember, we'll be releasing the next clinical module in a couple of weeks. Subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Thank you. Thank you.